Welcome back. Bzzz. As if as if an intentional setup and payoff, uh, Stephanie did have a food order <laughs> that arrived. Yeah. Right after that episode, yeah. Like that a, episode. Once again, not not a food order, like a DoorDash, but like a box of groceries that I got on crazy From discount the, yeah. because I'm <laughs> I'm I'm working the system. Yeah. I'm a young person who needs more <laughs> money. <laughs> try what, to stop me. Try to stop me. <laughs> But while we were hanging, while we were hanging out and waiting, I I was thinking about something separately, which is the because uh, we we talked about Brian, and I don't remember if I mentioned this before, but specifically, I feel like Brian Brian's existence as a societal force because it feels like his very existence is like a form of commentary in its own. Like he is like a force that haunts the community in this game. Like that's his role. Yeah. Is that uh, what came to mind to me is that there's a specific refusal to give a shit when it comes to like the government and the police compared uh when it comes to queer communities historically like famously ronald reagan just ignored the aids crisis for as long as possible because it, when it was seen as a as the gay disease it was a thing that was seen as a divine punishment and so you could literally just have the, <laughs> oh goodness yeah we, we just literally had the the president of the united states was just ignoring countless people gotta love when ronald that, reagan that were his pops own. up because like it's yeah. never i've never it's like, never it's, good it's never good it's, it's why it's so alarming whenever conservatives are like he's the best one ever we're big fans i'm like how like he oversaw mass deaths of his own people because they were deemed uh undeserving of any kind of protections for that or awareness and so it's like oh it's just the gays are dying that's who fine cares? who cares yeah it, no just a blatant and, and it's, it's like you know that you know it's not like a magic gay disease it and, will and we all just, love nancy too it will just keep going like <laughs> what the fuck but like but on a different level there's a jeffrey dahmer like preyed on the queer community and specifically, like, oh, he got away yeah. with so much because people didn't care about his victims. Well, yeah, that, that, that whole very, very famous incident where a person escaped, like, very drugged and ran down the street. A guy ran down the street naked, like a young guy. And the police found, like, found him. And when Jeffrey Dahmer showed up, he was like, oh, no, it's okay. That's just my boyfriend. We got into a lover's quarrel. And the police were so reluctant to get involved in anything gay because it scared them they, they 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 returned this very obviously needing help asking for help drugged up young kid to the guy who would eventually murder him and kill him and that's exactly what happened because yeah. they refused to get involved in something that made them uncomfortable because they didn't want to talk about gay relationships so when jeffrey Dahmer pulled out the we're lovers we just fought they were like oh we're gonna stay out of this have a nice night guys like yeah and, and I, that, that kid died because of that and i think about that because of the like when we, when we get to brian as this looming person that just just tears through the queer community and kills everyone one by one like that's like he has a burial site and everything and he's just getting away with it and he's not good at it like he's not he's not secretive and creative or, or like clever he's not some as as they basically never are like he's not some magical tv dexter man who has the perfect plan for all this like clint saw chase on the table that's how shitty he is at this it'd probably be pretty easy just to ask some people about who they thought killed a person yeah like oh a person's missing do you have any idea who might have done it i feel like you could just ask certain people and they'd probably be able to very easily point you to the one guy in town who seems like the guy who's probably the person doing all these things. Yeah, like so many people are dead and he's not getting caught because no one actually cares. And yeah. so here we are, like the out, the like, the, even though it's not set out right at the beginning of the game, at the more you learn about these, these characters, the more it becomes clear, like this cast of characters we're playing as is a their own like queer sub community of themselves. Like all of these characters are most likely somewhere on the LGBTQ plus spectrum. Like there's they're somewhere in there. And there, so we, we we now have a plot line where somebody is missing and we need help. And it feels intentional at that point when Flynn is pointing out the fact that, like, where are the police? What the fuck is happening here? Because, like, no one is finding Carl and it's not a big town. And he's like, like, he's he shouldn't be this hard to find on this level, but there's no one there that like no one is helping them essentially and like it feels like a noticeable 
like that in relationship with the Brian and the other elements and the, and the fact that they specifically set up in route 65, that chase was on the verge of becoming a Brian victim essentially with that, 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 Craigslist that, that ad. yeah, the, 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 the ad in the paper, like this feels like a very, all this combines to be, I feel like a very in, intentional piece of commentary. Well, it's like there's, there's a, I don't know if it, it feels like a lawless town, like, like the police are obviously mentioned in this story, but never are there consequences seen or never is there actual involvement from them. It just feels like everyone's on their own, which I guess it would feel like to be like a minority of, of like many kinds who needed help from like our police system. It, it really bums me out to think like, Hey, if you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, Carl is is rich. I do kind of feel like they might they should be looking for him, only because he's uh he comes from like the one rich family in town. But it sucks that I even think that. It sucks that I even have to think like, oh, they should look for him, or they, it would yeah. seem more likely that they would look for him because he is a rich guy in this town. He's not like from where Jenna's from, and he's not like you know. It it it's just it's just sad that I have to even like preface it with that thought. And it's the, the, the it's where you get to the intersectional element where the beyond just the the queer characters, there's just the fact that this is this entire community is extremely marginalized, and so they are very much a uh, entire community of people that would just get ignored. And like the, the amount of shit that's just happening in the open in this town because of the fact that like they are just absolutely ignored by anyone that is supposed to be doing anything about these problems is the basis of like the entire game to some extent like that's i have to hear about terms like bank bank deserts and food deserts and so on like mm-hmm. this is the everything desert like there is nothing no form of like of, of it's the uh, wild west oversight it's lawless. seems to exist there's, here there's no grocery store there's no nobody cares about these people who live in this very poor town and that can be seen as a, as like a metaphor for a lot of people's lives where people just don't care about them yeah I step outside into the cool air, letting my feet rest on the hard asphalt of the parking lot. I stand there, enjoying the openness of my surroundings. You can only be cooped up with two other people in one room for so long before it becomes increasingly apparent you're all just breathing each other's air. TJ had tried to keep Leo's company today while they went out to look for Carl, but... TJ was saying Leo was really distant. Like I said, I felt really bad leaving TJ alone with Leo. It's okay. TJ's used to being uncomfortable with everyone in this friend group. That really... That's unfortunate. <laughs> I'm sorry, TJ. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the game to reveal horrible things about TJ just so I can feel a little bit less guilty about everything that happens to TJ. <laughs> and I don't know if that will ever happen. I don't think it's like... going to reveal horrible things about <laughs> TJ. I just feel like it's going to reveal like the extent of TJ's personal trauma, which is going to make me feel worse. Just, just elements of like why Flynn is so mad at him, and other elements. I'm just like, is any of this justified at all? Because like, otherwise, it's just so brutal. <laughs> like, like immediately, I'm like, oh, j- j- just leave TJ alone. <laughs> like, it's this poor little cat. I-, I just hope TJ, when he is at college, has like a community that he exists in. I feel bad that every <clears throat> person he ever interacts with, he feels uncomfortable around. Oh no. They ended up getting to the little recreational camping spot right before the lake, and Leo just said he had to go and left TJ oh, there without no! a ride. TJ, no! <laughs> Dude, it's like the party all over again, but this time he's not dressed like a ghost. He just has someone drop him off in an uncomfortable situation in the middle of nowhere. Oh my god. Oh, no. A recreational camping spot? He get murdered out there. He said he didn't mind because he enjoys the walk, but Leo's behavior had him worried. Yeah, no fucking kidding. I'd be pissed. I'd uh, be so pissed. Uh, oh, I gotta go. Bye. I'm gonna be out in the middle of nowhere in the dark. Oh my gosh. I would never forgive that person. I, I, oh, yeah, right. I, there's another thing of me putting two and two together on something. Uh, this is a this is just a theory, but... So, in Leo's route, Leo did a whole bunch of horrible guilt shit to get TJ to go away. Yeah, like he lied to him about our project, and yeah, like we're like yeah, he he keeps whenever they're whenever they're alone together, he sets up the idea that Chase is too busy. When we're in the back of the car, we're about to discover Leo's lies, and he starts yelling about ice cream and stuff yeah, to distract yeah. us. And then we see his text messages and see that he's just straight up lying to Leo uh, to TJ to get him to go away, basically. Mm-hmm. But he leverages guilt 
about their about their past specifically like so he's willing to lean on tj's trauma in order to get her to get him to go away and that's that's why and that was all really damning for leo but what that made me what i realized what that probably also did is that like when when people are the most uh unsteady seems to be when they are most affected by echo and so i think each route to some extent is dealing with each member of the group in a way that directly confronts their biggest problems or traumas or so on because you're interrogating their their history and so on like with carl and that that also points to them having a big issue with the setting itself and it possessing them or making them see things like obviously leo was completely detached from reality by the end and thought there was another chase that was the one he wished he had and so on and literally just was completely in a different planet so flynn had to save us from no, out of nowhere and so like with all these these things we're putting together i'm like fuck <laughs> Leo's route is the one where we see, like, after we discover the stuff about how he's treating TJ, that's when we see TJ running down the street r- from something that we can't see. Yeah. And then we, and then he's hiding under the the bed from something. And even then, Leo's still treating him like a burden that that they don't that he doesn't even want to deal with. And I'm like, I think Leo going after TJ's guilt, and also probably a combination of Flynn also doing that, like the number, like the, everyone going after TJ in that route. I think triggers him his, being one his, of the first people to be freaking out when yeah. everyone else is still having a normal day. Like the fucking Shaun of the Dead, like the one a zombie that's walking down the street. Yeah, shit. He, he's like he's like one of the first affected. And like I think there's a direct I think you can chart that as a direct reaction of like like Leo is specifically being so abusive that his behavior is causing TJ to lose it before anyone else in that route. And it's like that's awful. <laughs> Uh, that is awful it, i this this friend group is so disjointed it's really depressing mm-hmm. it's like how like i mean obviously tj's there because of jenna and i guess jenna's there because of us and the original maybe friend Carl. group was us jenna and leo i mean leo's leo's which is a surprise because carl feels like our oldest friend like with the vibes well, especially because of the, the route uh 56 yeah, but it was originally just us and Jenna, and Leo joined in, and he like and learned, Leo joined in quite because like, of us. He didn't. Well, he didn't know English. Yeah, so, like he was learning English by hanging out with us. Like that's how early it was. And then at some point, TJ and Flynn and Carl, over the course of school, like joined the friend group in an unspecified order. I mean, it kind of seems like Chase is honestly the middle of a lot of this in terms of like connections with people. Because I don't think Jenna yeah. would have been here. It would explain us. why we have a route with each one if yeah. we pick the right choice. And TJ wouldn't be here without Jenna. And Leo wouldn't be here without us. And Carl would <clears throat> Carl's like basically connected to us and Flynn's connected to Carl. So that, like this is just a very unstable friend group. Yeah. Basically. Chase is <laughs> not the best uh center of this group that he could be. <laughs> no, I mean he's he's a decent protagonist only in the sense that he is um he's not perfect in any kind of way there's a lot of things i disagree with chase even about which is good because i think we've been liking him less every route and i feel like it's only gonna get worse (laughs) yeah no he makes some decisions i mean obviously that are beyond our own control that i'm just like oh or he says something a certain way i'm like that's kind of dickish but i mean i think he's the most relatable because i think he's just kind of a normal normal ish guy ish normal ish guy (laughs) in the sense that he isn't perfect and his interactions aren't always perfect you know it's also mean. It's also a little bit mean to the narrative sometimes. To, uh, mean of the narrative sometimes to always be following him, so he can be way more embarrassing than anyone else can be sometimes because the, well, that's the just story like normal won't go life. Away. It's like how the narrative is. Uh, I just mean like like I have to follow myself all the time. God damn, that fucking sucks. It's like oh, this yeah. is the only person I get to follow. Yeah, I don't get to I, switch bodies. I'm just Stephanie my whole life. Ugh, gosh. But I just mean like the the narrative that doesn't. Bitch. The narrative doesn't. Like the the our POV does not follow Flynn into the shower and then reveal to us that he's masturbating and tell us who he's masturbating about. Because Carl, like, it's Carl. <laughs> like <laughs> those horns. Ooh, like, woo. That's a, that's, a, that's a specific form of revealing bullying that, that the narration There's can do dirt. to Chase sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Which so that I, I do think about sometimes that like the way that Chase is presented is it's never going to be different from how favorable other favorable yeah. because we're with him all the we time. We have to see every character from the outside and we can see Chase from the inside and it's really. Mean sometimes that that happens 
Uh, oh, God, sorry. I just remembered Leo's fucking glove compartment. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I would, I would have liked to be inside of his narrative when that happened. I put out a tweet that like, uh, like which what 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 which thing was worse, Leo's Leo's uh, TV dinners or Amicus's lube jar? And uh, if I remember correctly, the I think the TV dinners won by a narrow margin. But the most common response was, "I'm surprised that's what you picked about Leo." And immediately, I'm like, "Oh, they all mean they all mean the glove compartment, don't they?" Yeah, no. Okay, so if, if it was glove compartment versus jar, I think glove compartment would have been far and away yeah, the landslide but not, winner. But we're not. There. I don't we think were there already. The but, jar. But I mean, the jar is a bad decision for wasn't. lube, but having lube seems like a responsible thing to yeah, have around. I, I was just horrified that it was in, in a, a jar. jar. That is horrible because that makes getting it out. A weird, shitty process that's just like you have to scoop it with your finger, which is itself just strange. Then I don't like that. I think also, just the worst container to be lubricated is a jar. Like, it, like the idea that it'll get on it is like, well, now, now you've made the specific thing that's hard to open sometimes harder because it's covered in. You, lube. you know, <laughs> it, it's kind of funny because I mentioned in the last video that like among my many interests of things to watch on YouTube, there's one where an old man reviews cooking, cooking gadgets. Right. Yeah. One of his tests is he always covers his his left hand, both of his hands in olive oil. <laughs> And tries to use the left hand to, to do things because basically it's like if, if you have a disability, it's basically to, it's it's to be as if you had like issues with grip or like a disability. You know, it was, it was it's like to see if it was accessible to other types of people. So he like tests it if you had like issues. But I'm just trying to picture like trying to open a lube jar or close a lube jar or do anything with a lube jar or the lid of a jar if your hands were already lube covered. Uh. <laughs> it, it, I think that would have failed the old man's like accessibility <laughs> test because it's just not practical. <coughs> it's just why it's not that's, that's not, not the containers people use not unless it's like Crisco or as people were happy to point out to me uh fisting lube why does that is it because you have to put your whole fist in there why can't, well, just, why can't it come in a bucket well it's just that the stuff that people use for fisting is uh you need such a volume of it in, in generally speaking that it just does they don't bother with any kind of like nozzle just, or like uh, or like uh lotion bob thing whatever that thing's called the dispenser like it's just it's just like a it'll just be like a barrel of stuff like or a jar of stuff like it's because because you just got to get it out i went i went to a <laughs> i went to a friend's house recently and they had like a ton a ton of lube and i made a joke about it it's like why do you have because they had like jugs of it <laughs> but he was like no no because he's he's a, he's a piercer and so when you piercings, you lube up the needle to make it to where it doesn't it doesn't grip when you're putting it through someone's ear or something. So it, it's like it's like a piercing aid. But I was like I was making all these fun jokes. And I was very disappointed to hear that it was only for yeah. his job and not for anything fun. Yeah. But he definitely did have an actual like bucket ish type thing. No jars. Though. Maybe it was still just innuendo. He's like I call it the piercer. <laughs> <laughs> No, he got all bashful. He's like, no, no. And I'm like, I was like, I don't think you need that much. That's like a that's like a Costco level yeah, supply. He, did, he just of had a lube. sale. There was just a sale, and he just stocked up. Must have been a real good sale. <laughs> the hammer is my penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that sounds scary. <laughs> don't hit nails with that. Jen, <laughs> Jenna steps out beside me, fidgeting some with her hair. Tough day, huh? Mm-hmm. She responds quietly. So, if we're going to search tomorrow, have you... I'd actually rather not talk about Carl and the search effort right now, if that's all right with you. Jenna pauses, crossing her arms over her chest. I know that sounds bad, but we truly are doing everything we can for him. Absolutely above and beyond. We've got a few more places on the outside of town that Flynn and I were going to look at, as well as some more phone numbers to call. Flynn's going to text us with all the details in the morning, so that's settled. I let out a little ex exhale of relief. I honestly have no idea where else to look, so props to them if they were able to scrounge up a place or two. I feel like, unless I forgot, I feel like they could have like had a little explanation of like, and here's what we did for the next six hours of searching. Because uh, if you look at the events of today, we woke up, Flynn showed up with fish, we talked to her <laughs> brother, and now it's nighttime. <laughs> yeah. 
not the most productive. This is a this is a thing I'll I'll periodically point out in D and D campaigns where I'll be like, "Hang on a minute, we've done one thing today. There's no way the day is over unless we're gonna like exposit that or something. Like just a moment. It can't. There's no way it's eight p.m. already. <laughs> we, we'll just we'll just assume that they did more. <laughs> but I don't I don't know if the actually if the narrative said that. Well, uh, what did you want to talk about then? Jenna leans up against the nearby post, luminescent light giving her fur a slight halo effect. She's looking at me now, eyes tired and the very faintest of smiles crossing her muzzle. To be quite honest, not much talking is needed. Her smile grows less faint, her tired demeanor shifting to something more akin to cozy warmth. It's infectious, and soon I'm smiling just the same. Your company is fine enough. <laughs> really? She nods. Well, same for you. That's good, then. It's very good. Great. Let's take a break from looking for a missing to and maybe dead friend to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got time for that. It looks, at, it looks at your watch. You're like, I don't think Carl's dead yet. I think we got some time. You know, the body can actually last 30 days without food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be fine. She lulls, she lulls her eyes, standing there with that look like she's waiting for something. It takes me a second to realize what for. Oh, so um, I'm just going to step over here. So fucking awkward. I take one comically large sidestep over toward where Jenna's standing. My tail swishing behind me in a low arc before slopping down, slapping down on the pavement. Whop. <laughs> He's got a heavy tail. Let's imagine it being it's like, not graceful. Being like, yeah, it's, it's not nearly as. It, like... would, it would make a slapping sound too. Yeah. <laughs> a whole ass otter tail. Jenna lets out a little amused noise as she peers up at me, her tail flicking in a contented sway. That there should not be apostrophe in let's. Uh checkmate. Yes, you're right. Uh, editors. Oh. She cants her head, putting on a on a front of innocent curiosity as I approach. Just cants again. Is that word that we were like that shows yeah. up a lot. Also, we like, don't use is, that. In, we don't use that in America. This is a word that often. one of these writers uses, and the other one does not. Like, not around here. We don't use that one. Not very often. I've never heard it. Probably until this game. Maybe. Maybe. I, I don't know. It, it, just, it, I, it was immediately obvious what it means contextually, but yeah. it was a surprise. It was. Uh, discombobulated, right? <laughs> hey, we don't need to pull. We don't need to bully the man. <laughs> no, no, I actually like discombobulated. <laughs> I like can't too. Actually, I'm gonna start incorporating that in my normal <laughs> life. Whatever for. Well, maybe to do something like this. I place my I place my paws on either side of her face. And I push her cheeks together and make her say, "Chubby bunny." <laughs> her fur is so much softer than mine with no oily sensation to it at all. I rub my thumb across her cheek, then lean down to plant my muzzle against hers. Our lips meet. Her touch is gentle, a comfortable yet intimate pressure. Soon she opens her mouth and I find myself doing the same. With Leo, it was always like some tongue battle for dominance, which of course can be fun, but right <laughs> now, this is nice. I can feel goosebumps in the back of my neck as her breath meets mine. It kind of smells like oatmeal. Hmm. <laughs> Had she been getting into my dinosaur egg oatmeal packets I brought? The dinosaur egg ones. I hope not. I don't even eat oatmeal, and I know I about those. I only have a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna pulls back after a few seconds, her face radiant and glowing. She looks content, despite everything going on. Hmm. She hums to herself in thought. I take her smaller paws in mine, interlacing our fingers. Uh, is something on your mind? Just never kissed a guy in a motel parking lot. She looks up towards the sky. Jenna, you're classier than I am. At night. Oh, oh during the day, though. Okay, Jenna. <laughs> oh. Extra scandalous. That response was not exactly what I had been expecting. Or sky. <laughs> just everywhere else then 
I tease, quickly putting on a big goofy smile to emphasize how much I'm joking and hoping to God she doesn't get offended. Right. I'm just making sure I remember to add it to my list. She says this with complete deadpan before pushing away from the post and turning to head back inside. Wait, I, I was just messing with She's you. She's teasing with us. Oh, I know. I could also see how obviously you were freaking out. You're you're like, you're internalizing all this. Your brain's like going back and <laughs> forth. It's like, what did he mean by that? Oh, like, what should I read into this? I'm going to think about this forever and bring it up two years later. <laughs> When we get into a fight that's no. unrelated to this. No. So you remember that time you said that one thing? I remember it. I've ne never yeah. forgotten. I'll never forget. Oh, you're you. wearing your Jenna uniform. My yeah, my 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 gray my I have like the same tank top. <laughs> I'm wearing a pajama pants though, so. Yeah. She walks past me, swinging her arm and smacking me squarely on the ass. <laughs> the shock of it renders me completely off balance. Because that's easy to do. <laughs> Yes, you fall all the time, Chase. It is one of your one of the core traits. Put it on his ref sheet. <laughs> it has been quite a long time since someone's done that to me, and I feel my face flush with heat as Jenna walks away. I can see her proud of herself smile stuck to her muzzle, even with her back turned. And God, what a backside. I was so nervous when we did it before. I guess I didn't really have time to appreciate things <laughs> I wish I could sleep in your bed tonight I speak without thinking and Jenna stops her paw on the door handle the audible thunk of TJ fussing about inside punctuate the silence ah oh, ruined he's, he's finished with his walk well Jenna says what's stopping you I don't know a little baby TJ I don't know if I could I don't think he's going to be incapable of processing the idea of us uh, sharing a bed, but I thought I thought we were warming up to something else here, and that so TJ being here means that's not about to happen. Well, I mean, maybe maybe that's what Jenna means. Maybe he's like, who, who cares if TJ <laughs> Make watches? Him watch. He's into it. I know. I'm a therapist. <laughs> he can leave or not. If he stays, no. I'll add it to his notes and I'll bring it up in therapy later. <laughs> A genuine question, but she doesn't stick around for the answer. And then I'm alone. With a little sigh, I rest my side against the same post Jenna was, closing my eyes again and just... letting the surroundings sink in. Mmm. I don't like the idea of Chase ever being alone in this parking lot. Yeah. I don't trust that. And not like the ominous buzzing of the lights. Is it the lights? Let's... Well, maybe I only want your bed in, so maybe I'm hearing it more than you. But like, there's like a. Yeah, I guess that is lights. Yeah, it's like it's like the bzzz of like a I fluorescent light. Yeah, I didn't listen that closely to it because it's a little quiet on my on my end. And I, I thought it, I I I assumed insects, but it sounds electric. It's too consistent, I think. Yeah. To be bugs. Again, it's unusually humid out, especially for spring, where we usually get less than an inch of rain a month. Monsoon season isn't set to start for another 90 days or so. I hold out my paws to the sky and let my tongue loll out, tasting the ozone in the air. <laughs> it's the closest thing I can get to being in, being in water right now, not counting the shower, of course. I mean, actually being surrounded in something vast and wet, like a moist blanket that you can let carry you away. Speaking of moist blankets... <laughs> It's not a thing. <laughs> Speaking of moist blankets, that's T not at all attractive. Yeah. TJ's been in the bathroom for like an hour, and I really got to piss. Oh, is he going to piss oh, outside no. again and we get gotta in trouble again? We got to go pee again? outside and get accosted by monsters. He always... Okay, we're going to see if this is going to happen again, because this is like obviously a running thing for him. <laughs> Why are the cryptids attracted to urine? <laughs> Otter urine specifically. One of the one of the cryptids being Brian, apparently, because that was also one of the times. Also, Brian is, would be is he exaggerating, or have we been standing out here for an hour? Because didn't we just get here? I mean, I feel like that's an, it's like a hyperbole. It's like oh, he's been in there for like a fucking hour. Yeah, like, I'm like, I thought we just got here, so he wouldn't know how long TJ's. But he hasn't seen TJ yet. Yeah, we haven't gone inside yet, right? Yeah, like didn't we just get back? I feel like I don't know. I don't know how this, how this sentence makes sense necessarily. I step away from the high-pitched buzz of the fluorescent outdoor lighting. There yeah, you go. Yeah, they got it. 
heading out around the bend of the motel into the wash nearby. I don't like how dark it is. This just it makes you want to see things. This, yeah, no, there's something very special about yeah. the obscured view. It's gonna be a monster. The shadows of those weird there. rocks look like Starship Troopers monsters. Yeah, they do. It takes me a second for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. They also, yeah, they made a choice to pick a protagonist that doesn't have good night vision compared to the other characters in the group, too. I mean, it, like I said, it's kind of special to pick a person that, like, it is like a, it is like the the horror movie girl protagonist where she can't run, <laughs> she falls all the time, and then she, like, can't see in the dark, you know? Obviously, humans can't usually see in the dark anyway, but it's like, I think, I feel like they definitely, like, picked a strategically fortunate animal to have in situations that are rough because yeah, an otter on dry land he doesn't have he doesn't have like sharp claws he doesn't have like immense strength he doesn't he's very kinnapable he's like he, <laughs> he's a he's a I water like animal when you're on a milk carton <laughs> that was so brutal <laughs> i'm just gonna change that to i would like you better if you were on a milk carton <laughs> It's so, it's so threatening. It's just, but not in a funny, not necessarily even in a funny way though. It's like, uh, it's like, haha. The joke is, I'm a, I'm a predator. <laughs> it's like nice face. It'd look better on a milk carton. <laughs> yeah, I mean, help, let me to help it, uh, uh, help it be there. Let me put it on there for you. Like I can make that happen. The desert at night can look pretty strange. Like the absence of the sun sucks all the color out of the world. It makes trying not to fall into a ditch all the more difficult when everything starts blending together. Once I find a good spot hidden away from any of the motel windows, I turn my back to it and get to, and get to leak taking. I'm making a concerted effort this time not to piss on myself. Good job, Chase. You're, wow. you're improving. Clap, 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 clap. Yeah. If that happens twice in a row, Jen is going to start thinking I have a fetish or something. Whereas otherwise, we can only suspect that the authors do. <laughs> water, water sports, sports. water sports of you course you have to name it we know what you mean i mean i don't know i, I brought that up before and people like don't know what i'm talking about They're like like yeah well like, i mean, jet yeah. skis and i'm like I just, sure i just bud. i just mean that like it's implied what he meant even if we don't know the name for it yeah so no, need no. To be pointed 100 percent. but also like water sports is such an unfortunate name for this fetish because like we're gonna have an olympic event in water sports yeah like it's not only does it sound like things that are it's a word that already exists for other stuff but also it implies a hilarious piss kink like like they're just having a wacky time there's a whole they're pool up to, they're, do, they're doing gymnastics <laughs> like it's so it implies such a more active like participation <laughs> like they're just up to all sorts of shit while it's happening like it's the goofiest fucking thing you could call this <laughs> Okay, I think uh, I think golden shower is a little bit more like an appropriate. I mean, obviously, yeah. there's a lot of a lot of aspects to water sports, but I mean, when you, when you tell me about the term water sports, I'm, I'm not like I'm imagining doing activities. The, the piss kink equivalent of like like Six Flags Marine World. <laughs> they would they the, back when it was just Marine World. I don't think they do it anymore. They used to do dolphins. Stuff, they used to do shows in the river. Where like the boat would be dragging oh, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, pyramid yeah, yeah. of people on skis and stuff like that. Like that's what I think of when, you, when you say water sports to me. Like just insane activities. Like this is my kink. I like to be the middle of the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> I get off on this. <laughs> Why do they call it water sports? We anyway? just talked about that. If you're actually into water based <laughs> sports, you can't really talk about your hobby without without the perverts in the room thinking you like piss. That's so funny. Though to be fair, there's much worse stuff to be uh, to there to be into, such as let's start shaming. Let's go. <laughs> I remember for, for the longest time, Flynn had this whole reputation oh, no. of being okay. a scat. I, I was I wasn't gonna say it. No, but, but there's literally only like okay, besides things that are like safe and consensual, uh, <laughs> like there's not a lot of things I would really say I have a huge opposition to. This is like the one that I would be like, no, shame. <laughs> I mean, I got it. I'm sorry. It's like the only thing I'm going to shame anyone about. It's probably going to be this. Kinks are uh, kinks are funny because there's like the blood. I don't even there's care. Like, kinks like, are funny where it's like there's whatever you're into, and then there's this whole like open middle ground of stuff where one person could be into things and the other person would be like, that's weird, but whatever, because it's like there's there's a whole world of inoffensive things that. 
it just it's just not that distressing to the other I'm person. I'm really into tube socks. And then there's this horror. I'm really into then balloons. There's the third list. <laughs> there's this that like to require your active participation in my yeah. fetish. It's going to require a lot from you that you're not going to be okay with. Like the whole middle ground involves like feet, where it's like. I don't get it, but okay. Like those kinds of things where you're just like, it's like, I don't, I don't get anything out of that. It's it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I've, I've, I've dated, I've dated a guy who was into feet and I was like, first of all, I'm like, I'm sorry. I have big feet. I'm sorry to disappoint (laughs) you. Is that good or bad? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know either. I'm like, I don't know what makes feet cute. I don't, I mean, I, I I guess I can make, I know what makes feet cute. It's like, oh, those are small, cute feet. I don't know. I I can guess. I can guess what this would be. (laughs) I don't think I have that. So first of all, I apologize to you, sir. Secondly, um, I'm not going to get anything out of this, and I want you to be aware of that. But I don't care, because it's not going to really bug me. Yeah. If you want to buy me shoes, go for it. That's a thumbs up from me. I'm going to like the free (laughs) things. That's fine. Socks, sure, whatever. But that's not going to bug me. That's not going to ruin my life. I will be an active participant in that, because... That is, like, I can do that for you. It's not going to take a lot from me. It's easy. <laughs> but this, no. <laughs> right out. If your fetish was eating TV dinners, right out. <laughs> I, <laughs> still mad about this I'm still mad potatoes. about that. You got to drain the mashed potatoes. You got you to you put a hole in the film and you pour it out over the sink. Now the drier, drier gross mashed potato. <laughs> anyway, a, there's a lot of things I can screen. do. Not this one. Not this one. I think it started after someone called him a shit pusher because he was gay, and of course he told them that he was and loved doing it. Then that got all ambiguated in the high school social mill until Flynn was apparently spending his weekends diving to septic tanks. No, no, no. <laughs> Flynn wasn't remotely pleased with that stigma uh, when that stigma didn't go away. And of course, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Strangely enough, that never got applied to Leo and I, even with all of our PDA. Personal dick associations. What is PDA stand? What? Um, public displays of affection. There we go. I was like, I, was like, I, was like, I, was like, I had to guess. I'm like, uh? Penis, dick, ass. <laughs> A little redundant. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> I guess... There's a crunching noise beside me. Oh, no. Dry bramble being tread underfoot and the sudden scuffing of dirt. The noise stops as soon as it starts, and I glance over, realizing I'm not alone. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what? Well, Micah's back in the story. Micah, you come here to watch us piss? I was wondering how when they'd come up, because I, I figured they're going to be involved more. So it's like the Kudzu thing, where like they, they tease it a bit, like, how much is Kudzu going to be involved? And then you have your personal one-on-one where you check out a fucking water pump <laughs> dude that was a, so random that's, a, that's your first date <laughs> whoa hey hey babe remember that time that we went and saw that old rusted water pump oh my gosh i knew i was in love with you right then <laughs> i blink i must have finished pissing a minute ago but here i am still holding my prick micah stares at the air for, aforementioned another word that that mcskinny likes before looking back up at me It's an effective word. I quickly shove myself back into my shorts, nearly tripping over myself as I step back away from him. Damn it. Where'd he even come from? Does that mean Chase was just... He just pissed and then he was done a whole minute ago, just standing there thinking about that whole thing with Flynn. Yeah. While he's just holding his dick. Sorry, I was thinking about scat. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't it just just weird that they call it water sports? Like, just start dumping it Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just thinking about stuff. Just stand there still holding Not in a kinky way. I'm not into that. I'm just holding my dick because I was peeing. Imagine fucking Chase standing there still holding his dick and he's just like... Like looking back at Micah and just info dumping about water sports, like she's like, isn't that weird that they call it that? Like, do you think about how like people that are that like, like actually like water sports, like they can't talk about it because all the perverts, like, <laughs> yeah, like what if you're like, what if you're diving? Like, what do you think? <laughs> just completely not noticing what he's doing. I was taking a leak. <laughs> the fuck you were, schizo. What you can't smell it? Don't can't bats smell? I don't know. I don't know bats. They can hear. I don't think they have a smell. 
They do the little eh, he has a funny echolocation pig nose. thing. Look at his funny pig nose. His voice is strange, distant. In fact, he looks completely out of it, as if his comprehension of the world around him is delayed. He's drawn He's drugs. Hi. You're just standing there, staring off into the great dark, nothing, cock and paw, jerking into the void. That how you defeat it? <laughs> That's how you defeat the void. <laughs> oh no, I have the call of the abyss. Better jacket. Oh no, uh, like take that abyss. Some fucking uh, Cthulhu type ominous presence is about about us in this world. I better start <laughs> jacking off. Like that's how you defeat the Lovecraftian horrors of having to exist. What are you talking about? What? Why are you even here? Micah points a half-lidded stare in my direction. His fingers wiggling around the edges of his tank top. He's not so much looking at me as looking right through me. I'm a bat, and it's night. I can be wherever I want. So you do- so you want to be here? The voice echoes so clearly in my mind, I can't help but say it out loud. So you want to be here? Fuck no. He sniffs, his answer spoken with a tired, slurred tone. I mean, I'm here because, like... There's dick all for me out there. Yeah, like, I paused too because I was like, is he talking? About, I'm here because there's dick. Well, I'm here because, like, there's dick all for me. Like, yeah. I just. Dick. <laughs> there's, oh, look at the. Oh, I got this. It does this chase dick out all for me. I, 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 I felt the vibe. <laughs> I, I came immediately. I don't know if a hyphen is grammatically correct, but I would have added one. To I would, dick I would, I would have. Make the sentence I would have too. Meaning, free because there is already a dick in play, so like we need some clarity. Fuck! Wait, you're talking about right here, right now, with you? I look into his widened pupils and slowly nod. Shit! Micah rubs at his face, pinching at his own lightly fuzzed cheeks. His gaze is still a million miles away. He is exhausted, or at least appears to, appears so now. Like someone on the tail end of a ride of a fierce upper. You can't put sleep off forever. Shit. I'm only half awake right now, and that's the worst way to be. It's like how when you're dreaming, you're flying, but when you're having a nightmare, you're falling. It's always falling. All right, he's coherent. Micah steps back, his heels hanging off the edge of the wash, and I'm sure he's about to tip over into it. Without thinking, I reach out for him, but he seems to lean away from my paw. What the hell am I doing? Don't touch the junkie. <laughs> it's not contagious, Chase. <laughs> um, now, wait, uh, time of chimpanzees, I was a monkey. Butane in my veins and I'm out to cut the junkie. What? Which one is this now? That's uh, that's, that's Loser by Beck. Oh, right. I should just get out of here. Back to the motel room. <laughs> I, like, I, like that, I like that one. He looks, so much, he looks so much smaller now. He's, he's, he's just a little kid, man. He's a little baby. He's 21. I know, he's a baby. In, in, my, in my years, that's yeah, a but baby. Everyone, but I think everyone else is 21. Oh, he looks, he looks younger. He looks TJ. Behold... I was shaped in, in iniquity, sorry. He extends his tattooed arms and shows off his wingspan. But we didn't draw that. Oh no! Before I can say anything to respond to the bat's ramblings, he tips backward, like he's expecting someone to catch him. Oh shit! Are you okay? Silence. I start creeping closer to the edge to get a look at him, but a small voice rings out from within. Fucking ow. He goes quiet again as dust plumes rise up from the ditch. Finally, another little grunt. No, where the hell am I? Ugh, son of a bitch. As I peer over the edge, I can tell it's about a good three to four foot drop. Nothing too dire, but definitely not pleasant. I have seen people take permanent damage from less. Yes. Like, we know somebody who, like, walked off a small, like, handrail height ledge and, like, it has years-long ramifications. Yeah, knee surgeries. Yeah. Multiple. 
Yo. <clears throat> Pismo Beach needs to light up their fucking walkways. Yeah. Micah's, uh, Micah's dazed gaze meets <laughs> me and quickly narrows. My ear popped is why I startled. <laughs> Ugh, fuck, of course it wasn't just a dream. I stare blankly at him, wheels turning in my head for a second. Wait, you were sleepwalking? If that's what you want to call it. Did you just have your prick out? I ignore the question. Your dream made you do a trust fall into the dirt. I thought you were tweaking on, out on drugs or something. If only. They can bond over their sleep disorders. Yeah, Besties. there you go. It's about as reasonable as why he likes all of his other friends. <laughs> yeah. It's, we have a single thing that bonded us once, and now Micah's, we're friends forever. Micah slowly pushes himself up to his feet and climbs out of the wash. His backside is completely caked with dirt and goat head bramble. He tries to pick out the stickers from his fur, wincing at each pluck. I think, well, I thought there was water in there for some reason. He thumbs over his shoulder. There's probably not going to be any in there for another few months. Yeah, fuck. I'll be gone by then. Micah shakes his legs a few times, some more dust scattering to the wind. Having white fur like that must suck in the desert here. If you ever get the slightest bit dirty, everyone can see. For me, everything just kind of blends into the brown fur. He squints at the building nearby and lets out a little astonished noise. I made, I made it all the way out here to the motel? That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Fucking hellfire, man. Shit's just getting so much worse. He shakes his head. Clear, he's clearly lucid now, but I don't know if he's really talking to me. I feel like this is a great way to get hit by a car. But just being out in the... <laughs> no, just having... Well, having this... Being able to, uh, to sleepwalk like that, apparently. Like like sleepwalking to the point where you go outside your house? <laughs> yeah, like, it's like... <laughs> you don't want to be incoherently walking around the city. He does that for one minute, and then everything's an absolute shit show. A cold chill creeps down along my spine. This is all sounding very familiar. They are gonna bond over it. <laughs> Yay! Pot helps. Keeps the bad vibes down. But it's a quick fix for something that you never know when it's coming. I've been having something similar happen to me, I think. Really bad dreams, mainly. His gaze snaps to me, as if he wasn't expecting me to actually respond to him. Fucking really? No shit. The bat extends an arm out to his surroundings, gesticulating at everything and nothing all at once while his wings flap around. You ain't the only one, musk fuck. You ain't seen how it's been. It's real shit down on Jasmine Street. The hum gets bad there. The hum? I frown, unnerved by the bat's words, but not really sure I should start questioning him. You wouldn't know. After all, you're just having a little fun trip and then fucking right off. Are we introducing an entire thing that's happening in the city that we've just skipped over for two routes? Like, that's the level of, like, what the hum, how the segmented hum? things are? Yeah, what is the hum? I mean, That's it, extremely sci-fi term, like, here's a big thing that's just happening in the society. I mean, I think we kind of got the impression <laughs> that there's just, like, consistently ominous stuff happening in Echo. We just didn't have, like, a name yeah. for it. I mean, I'm assuming the hum is, like, an audible... Or maybe it's just, like, the vibes? I don't know. But also, he's, ta he's talking about, like, a thing that's present, like, well beyond, like, the, like, here, everything's fucked today part of the game. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think we, I think we kind of had the idea that there was something weird consistently happening in Echo all the yeah. time. It's just that we haven't really brought it up. It's like the conversation that comes up <clears throat> regarding Leo's culpability is, like, is Echo always fucking with him all the time? And, like, what level is, is, is going on there? Well, I think there's some decent people in Echo, so I really don't think you can make that argument. Yeah. I mean, like, I think, like, I mean, obviously... Like, Jan Kudzu's seeming immunity to it. And then Janice, who is nice up until the day where that thing happens and she freaks out. Janice is and a nice person. And probably killed somebody. Yeah. 
I think we didn't we. I don't remember if it was confirmed or if we just heavily suspected because of tropes that like the meat was, was like just a person. They didn't go into it, but she did kill uh, what's his face right in. F- no, no, she got she got killed. She got shot. She got by, shot okay. by Duke. But I, I like there was like some large amount of meat that was. Yes, yeah, it seems like it was just, probably. It felt like she probably killed somebody. But the last te- the last person that walked in there. We're supposed to get the impression that she's nice, like, the rest of the time. Which is why we freak out when we see her peeing on the side of the road, acting really funny. Yeah. Micah says this like it's a bad thing. However, I'm not guilty of wanting to get the hell out of here the soon as possible convenience. And, yeah, and Carl's a nice person, too. Sorry, I mean, he's obviously got his own personal problems, but he's not not mean to anyone. No. When we find Carl, of course. So, um... You're gonna leave town too? Micah glances over at me. Yeah. You should go soon, Swell. But he'll be back. But you'll be back. They all come back. They. We. We all come back. What are you on about? I'm honestly not quite sure myself. The words just sounded right at the time. I shrug. I. I guess that's just what it feels like to me. Hmm. Not everyone does. His tone shifts uh, more melancholy. The young bat reaching into his pocket and flipping on an old cell phone for a moment. It looks like one of those cheapo ones that you buy the minutes and text messages f- uh, for per usage. It's a burner phone, yeah? <laughs> Burners, I think they're called. After a moment, I realize who he's referring to. I never really uh, knew Keith. Sorry, he went missing. Hey, who the fuck's Keith? I don't know any Keiths. <laughs> the mileage that we're gonna get out of this. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I think it's, I just think it's funny. It's, it doesn't come up much as a name. I play a lot of games. He stops messing with his phone. Yellow eyes flicking back up to me. <clears throat> you didn't know him, and you're not the reason he disappeared. So stop talking like you're personally involved. I feel myself starting to get a little frustrated. I don't I don't know why I'm still here. In fact, I don't know why Micah's still here. He's just lingering about, even after he claimed he came this way due to sleepwalking or whatever. What was Keith doing before he went missing? This is the point where I seem to have Micah's full attention. He glances around for a moment before stepping forward, lowering his voice to a quiet rasp. What he was always doing, schizo. Trying to fix people. Oh, no. He's so, he's, he's becoming sadder. <laughs> what, Keith? Yeah. Like, no, no, what was he doing? Was he trying to fix Brian? I think he was I think he was trying to do the, the, the psychedelic eye-opening enlightenment drugs. Oh, you think he was annoying trying to fix people? And not, like, like being a great person. No, I mean, I, 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 I think he's a good person because he's trying. I, I do think it's going to be the psychedelic drugs Do you think he's full thing. of shit in the way that he tries? He'd see someone who'd be other... T- <laughs> Sorry. He'd see somebody who'd be utter shit trash and then find their inner spirit or whatever. You know, native shit. Oh, right. Because the because the Fenix or the foxes are all uh, are all Native, native Americans or yeah Native I guess Americans I guess they're in America right who knows Native yeah whatever Native to the like, area in this universe Native Echo I, I think this game carefully avoids naming anything besides Echo yeah which is supposedly based on a place called Echo in real life but also that place is not in the state that this game is based on <laughs> so it's like a not real location so we can't really track down the route stuff. But they're kind of coy with actually calling anyone as being from a specific country. Because I don't think they ever name them all. He thinks for a second. Well, native light. Whatever. Keith is one of those weird kids who read philosophy books in school. He helped all of us, of course, and I thank him bits for it. Screw ass didn't know his limits. Started getting chummy with his supplier. This big bear bastard named Brian. Ugh, oh, fuck supplier. Keith dealt drugs? 
bitch everyone deals and gets dealt an echo. This ain't a surprise, or shouldn't be. So let me get you off your moral high horse right now. He squints in thought. Yeah, now that I think of it, wasn't your mom the one that let Sven miserly plow her for Oxy? <laughs> oh. What? what? Exactly, what? I can't help but be taken aback by that one. No. You're saying your mom didn't take Oxy? No, she had back pain. She had back pain issues and took Percocet, but that's it. That is Oxy, bitch. But enough about your whore mom. <laughs> oh! Fuck you. Oh. He huffs. He's so full of shit. Just like before at the bonfire. Or he's completely... No, he might be telling the truth. Might, I don't be, know. It might be true. Percocet is Oxy. <laughs> I dip my paws into my pockets and turn to leave. Now, I gotta, I'm a little bit like jarred. I'm like, did, did my mom fuck... Somebody for Oxy? Like, I, I, I feel like... It, you're not gonna ask any more questions, Chase? I feel a little... That's I don't know. Because he rejects it as a premise. I get a couple steps toward the motel before I hear the bat rasp up behind me. Rasp from... Hey, Don't be a bitch. I keep walking. The shower is probably freed up by now. And God knows I could use it. If not just for the water, but the time alone. No. Wait. Seriously. Stop. Chase. I hear a frustrated sigh. Chase, please. I need to talk to you serious-like. Aww. He's, he has huge eyes. Hey, he's a bat. Yeah. I turn. And if his sight is any good, he can get a good view of how done with his shit I am from my expression alone. You really can't, uh, call- you can't really accuse someone's mom of being a whore and call them a whore and then have the person just, like, stick around and be cool talking to you still. It's like yeah. a, it's a bad strat. No, he's- he's- there's, there's a reason why Micah and Flynn are incapable of getting through a conversation. Because yeah. they both do this every time. Keith tried to help this supplier turn his life around and all that. I hesitate. I didn't expect him to start talking about Keith again. He saw the goodness in him, etc, etc. Before all this, Keith would always take me out after school on Fridays. We go flying these RC planes we tinkered with down by the river. I mean, it sounds about as fun as plucking pubes to most folks now, but little me loved it. The moment he started getting close to Brian, that stopped. We saw him less and less until, poof. Keith's gone. No one knows where he went, including Brian. So claimeth he. And I had nothing left here. My anger with the bat begins to fade as he looks me straight in the eye. There's something about the tone of his voice that's different. Like this is actually a matter he's thought about for a long time. Micah, are you... I exhale, stepping forward and lowering my voice. Are you trying to tell me something? Something about Carl? No, I'm trying to get you to whip out your dick again. The runty bat's nostrils flare as he steps closer. I cover my crotch with my free paw and he rolls his eyes. Do you want help finding the rich fat kid? I hesitate at his hostile phrasing but begrudgingly nod. Any information at all could help at this point. Yes, I want help finding Carl. Do you know anything that can help us? Cool. And hopefully. He doesn't speak for a time, rolling his cell phone in his paws. Don't report anything I'm about to tell you to the cops. I'm genuinely trying to help you here. But I need you to swear to that. Sure, whatever. I swear I won't tell the cops. I lie. <laughs> Good. Nothing I did is really illegal, but it can be implicating as hell if you don't find your friend. Is this about the meth that you guys said Carl was taking? No, that was bullshit. I knew it. Well, Flynn knew it. Because <laughs> Flynn's <laughs> actually in Carl's life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we all thought he's on meth. <laughs> what good friends we are. <laughs> Keith, anyone ever tells you that 
I'm on meth, they're probably lying to you. Or I, they somehow made you. <laughs> yes, yes. I, and if anyone also, told the follow-up question would be, where's Stephanie? <laughs> <laughs> Wait like, a minute. Like, like now? <laughs> oh, no, I just gave Stephanie a bunch of meth. I don't know where she is. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't fall for that, okay? I was trying to figure out how to dispose of it, and I got lost in the park, and I thought it was gonna... I was, like, trying to give it to the police or something. I just didn't want to be found with it, so I, I got know, scared. I just didn't know how long the path was gonna be, and I just didn't want to turn around because <laughs> I already walked this far, but then, like... <laughs> I did do that. I'm factoring in a real story. Yeah, not the meth part. No, the part where <laughs> Stephanie was in a park. I got park. lost in a park because it was just, really, it's really just, big. It's just so long of a route. It's and, miles long. And she hit the part where she, like... It's like, I don't want to go back. Like, it has to end. And I thought it was going to loop. Wasn't, I thought it, it was, wasn't ending and it wasn't looping. I thought I was on a loop. And it was like during the time right when COVID started, so I couldn't get an Uber back. And I had to walk yeah. all the way back and it took me like fucking an hour and a half. It became a genuine, like, is Stephanie missing right now? I, type I, thing. I called it, everyone, but nobody enough. answered. Yeah, but then we tried getting back to you and you like either didn't have reception or phone died or yeah. something. So we also were like, what happened to Stephanie? I just showed up after a while. I had to carry my dog back because she got tired. <laughs> That's how, that's how much you fucked up. <laughs> Your dog couldn't walk anymore. I know. I was, Kiki was, knows I was, we're talking uh, about it. That her. was a horrible day. You trying to get attention, Kiki? Yeah, my, my dog's trying to, get attention? My dog's trying to hey. repent for being such, hey. such a, hey. a sad excuse for a dog. Hey. She couldn't even <laughs> she couldn't even finish the route. <laughs> like Hellfire, I'm going to start ratting fuckers out in front of everybody. The Hendrix house was marked. Jeremy tipped Clint off that Carl was staying home alone. Oh. Well. Clinton then brings me on to scope shit out just before midnight at 11. I could see well in the dark and got a good look at their alarm system. That's when I noticed two big glowing eyes staring back at me. Oh. Tying it into the... Micah saw the eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, but there was a flash. Next thing I know, I'm falling from the second story ledge into the riprap. The photo. That was Micah. Wait, oh, it's a photo of Micah? Oh, I thought he also saw the thing because we're because we're what? Well, mm. Wait, but yeah, but he saw the red-eyed thing too. Why is it a photo of Micah? Oh, the, the person think, who took the photo. I think Carl took a photo of Micah, but the but it's just like fucked up red eyes. But the flash made Micah fall off the fall off the ledge. But he said he saw. I thought he said he saw. It's either that or they both saw the creature separately, and but it's being told in a way ambiguous enough that we can interpret it as being Carl taking the photo of Micah. It makes me want to look at the photo again. Yeah, but that was, I don't even know how to find it again. No, no. Like, we need a glossary. That was Micah. The flash of Carl's cell phone camera. That has to be it. He took a picture of you before you fell. We found the photo the next day. <laughs> he doesn't like that. <laughs> The bat's lips tighten. Well, fuck me then. Guess it's good that I'm getting ahead of this. It barely even looked like you, I think. The picture was all distorted. I tried to wave off his concerns with a reassuring tone, reshifting the conversation back to Carl. What happened next? Micah sighs, speaking up again. Next thing I hear is a whole shit ton of thudding. Like, da dunk, da dunk. I couldn't move. Didn't want to start sprinting off while anyone inside was looking f looking out a window. So I held it up in a blind spot, and it always kept going for a solid 30 minutes. Then a fucking hell of a clatter. Sound of wooden boards snapping inside. Sounds like it would be Carl, Carl ramming his head yeah, against the wall. Yeah, in, in the basement, where there's yeah. the plaster everywhere. Next thing I know, the fat ass is taking off into the desert, completely spooked. Which direction? South, I think. Anyway. He holds up his basic looking cell phone. I gave Clint a call, told him what happened. He started freaking the fuck out on me, cussing and swearing, spitting up a storm. Kept insisting he needed to call someone, and that's the last I heard of it. Spent the next 12 hours nursing a bruised tailbone in an abandoned trailer off Route 65. Well, goddamn. Actual answers. This is all really helpful, Micah, but why are you telling me this? Why are you ratting out your friends to someone you hate? The bat groans aloud, a look of exasperation crossing his tired features. 
Have you been listening at all? There are fuckers out there I don't trust. And if there's anything to be done about putting a boot to their asses, I'm down. For Keith. <laughs> For Keith. For Keith. For Keith. The bat top. Uh, <laughs> the bat taps at his phone a, a few tops. times before handing it my <laughs> with those tattoos. Uh, a few times before handing it my way. Give me your number. I'll keep you updated on what's going on. The supplier guy I mentioned will be coming into town. I'll see if I can get some more info out of him and Clint about the ram. I take the phone, slowly using the tiny button-based numpad to put it in my number. Beep, it has beep, buttons beep, 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 beep. in like 2012 or some shit. Yeah, dude, it's a burner phone. You can buy... Yeah. I think, oh, I think oh, you yeah, can buy do, one of those right now. They do still right make now. those, yeah, yeah. Right. I forgot about the burner phone stuff. Didn't they sell them at Best Buy when you worked there? They have like a uh, burner phone section? It probably would have been with the phones... So that not would have not been, your jurisdiction. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I think it's like a Verizon or something. Like uh, at Best Buy's, the phone section is a different company. Yeah. Like it's not even the same like employee pool. It's like just straight up an actual Verizon store in the middle of the thing or something or whatever. They probably just like pay rent for their sp yeah. space. But no, there was a there's a there's the there's the computer section. Uh, the appliances section, the TV section, and then the worst department of them all, portable electronics, which is what I was, which which includes cameras, car stereos, video games, and all media in one department. These are not related things to know about, and they're also just an X across the landmark of the, like, across the layout of the place. Everyone has one department that they hang out in. I would like portable electronics people just have to walk around the entire store constantly because they're they have like six departments at once that are all too insignificant to have their own thing until when Circuit City was going under we decided that we wanted to be more competitive with GameStop so gaming became its own department and they didn't ask and they didn't give me the chance to apply for it or tell me it was happening so gaming was removed from my job which was worse which is like the one thing that you <laughs> didn't know about the one thing I didn't know anything about I'm like I don't know anything about fucking DSLRs you think I can afford a DSLR I'm I don't even know what that student. is yeah well that's a DSLR the the camera with the adjustable nose and everything. I use, oh. I use that for my videos. Well, you now. know about that now, then. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Zoe B, the the YouTuber, what her camera is, and I bought that one. <laughs> After spending like an hour getting a headache trying to learn about cameras more and what I should be getting for YouTube, I just asked a YouTuber what they use, and they answered. So I bought that one. <laughs> Dude, I was trying to print off an assignment for like school the other day and I got so angry at the printer downstairs I was cursing up a storm that is the extent oh, of yeah, my no. interaction with electronics that is I enough I recently gave up trying to scan with my printer because it required it required they now they're now all attached to apps with yes I had a fucking and you can't oh. and they can't just use them without them ah. for some reason and I'm sitting there looking at my login information that I'm sure is correct, but it's not working. I just can't even successfully log into the stupid app, which is always laggy and shitty anyway. And I'm like, these devices, you used to just press a button and they did the job. Like, you guys Dude, are being assholes. why can't I take a cord and plug it from my laptop to the printer and push print and have it print like you used to be able to do? Yeah. Why can't you just do that? I'm so mad because at Because capitalism... Uh, they want to say it breeds innovation, but the only thing it innovates at is extracting capital. I just need to print <laughs> shit. And I, and I just got an assignment that requires me to scan stuff into a computer. And I'm like, well, fuck, I'm about to figure that shit out. I don't know how that works. We have a fax machine <laughs> at my work. And guess what? I don't know shit about that. Papers come out of it sometimes. I'm like, where do they come from? <laughs> <laughs> Where did it come from? <laughs> Is it magic? So someone's like, what's your fax number? Elves? I'm like, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my? Is it the phone number? And they're like, no. And I'm like, I don't know what the fax number is. You think it'd be written on it? It is not. Whoops. I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a few ways this can come back and bite me in the ass, but at this point, I'm pretty damn desperate for a lead. I just never would have expected it would come from Micah, of all people. And willingly at that. And here I thought you hated me. I don't care enough about you to hate you, schizo. I'm just always like this. <laughs> I'm just always an again, asshole. Damning. 
I hand the bat back his phone, unsure how to feel about that response. If I don't hear from you by the time you have to go Sunday, by the time we have to go Sunday, you should get the fuck out of Echo. His tone is flat, a matter of fact statement that he believes doesn't need further explanation. I nod in response, wondering if it's too late to take my number back. Well, uh, if that's all. I glance back to the hotel. Michael looks too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Actually, one more thing. Oh? I perk a brow in his direction. You still with that wolf boy, Leo? I remember him getting skittish about him earlier. He's acting nonchalant, but there's definitely something more to this question than casual curiosity. The answer to the question itself is also a complicated one. No, the answer should be no. Chase, stand up for yeah. yourself. No, not, you're not with him. Not he really? Why do you ask? Ugh, I don't give a shit. I just made a huge point to ask. He looks down at his phone as he says this. A lie. Then why'd you ask? He just... Uh... I, I hear he talks a lot of shit. I was wondering if he ever talked shit about me. I didn't know you existed until this route. <laughs> Micah folds his arms over his chest, staring at his phone screen. Do you have a crush on Leo? Micah? Did, did y'all fuck? Yeah, did y'all fuck? You have a history- wait, he has a different history with Leo than I expected. <laughs> he seems to care a I lot thought, about his opinion. He, I thought they got in a fight or like they- well, like a normal fight. Like, I thought they had- I, he seemed jumpy in that way, so I thought they fought, but now I'm thinking something- they, they've done stuff. Well, let's see how he reacts to, to this. Was it- I wonder if it was before or during the milk carton. Before or during- oh, when he was missing? Yeah. I, I'm assuming before. I, I think if he's missing, I, I don't think Leo knew where, knew where he was either. I think he was missing in, to the whole town. To be honest? I don't even recall a time he even mentioned you by name. It's the truth. Out of all of the Jasmine Street kids, Micah was one I never really heard Leo talk about. Oh, well, I guess it'd be... I think it'd be post... Okay, hold on. I think it'd be post Mill Carton. I get what you're saying now, because I think that, um... I think, well, Mill Carton was when they were kids, kids. I think post Mill Carton is now. Well, yeah, I but I mean... I think he was missing until he came back now. Yeah, but I think it's like, you know, now could be like the past couple of years. You know, yeah. like now the what, the duration of Chase being gone exactly is when Micah Chase came being back gone at some point. and like basically like he could be gone for like you know eight years and come back and that would still be like now even if it was like a couple of years you know yeah and you know you we know how Leo was lonely without us so figures he looks sad yeah I think he's got a thing I I I, I think they got up to shit what what. I'm out of here. I'll text you in a bit. The bat turns and heads off. There's something about him that sticks with me, and I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, like he maybe fucked your ex-boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> Once he disappears around the corner of the motel, I take out my phone and tab over the group chat. Friday. Look at those hoof marks. Okay, those are hoofs. Oh, that's Carl. Yes. Running off into the desert. Oh no, he's oh. on a bad trip. I did not expect this entire route to be tracking down Carl. <laughs> it's an event. Ooh, it's gonna be spite the day the day beginnings are spicy, but we'll have to wait till next time. Yeah. See ya. Anticipation. Mm -hmm.